Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic and um, loads going on. So I'm going to be doing a puzzle called The Devil's Cage by Tinker Troy, um, in which the rules are relatively straightforward. It's a killer Sudoku with a couple of arrows and a knight's move restriction. So I spoke a little bit too soon. <laughs> there is one to nine in every row, column and box. That's what we call normal Sudoku rules applying. Each cage is given its sum. So the digits in that cage have to add up to 34. We've got a couple of arrows. The digits on the arrow equal the number in the circle. And uh, there's a knight's move restriction. So the digit in that cell could not be in any of these ones. Am I getting that set right? Yes. Two couldn't appear in any of those. Obviously it couldn't appear in those as well because of the knight's move restriction. So those are the rules. Um, now, Tinker Troy said that it was quite like another puzzle that he saw featured about a year ago, and bonus points if we can say what that was. And I haven't a clue, I don't think. Maybe as we go along, maybe I'll get more idea, but uh, no idea. Do, do tell us if you recognise this puzzle in terms of its genesis. Um, it'll be very interesting to know. Anyway, those are the rules of the puzzle we'll be doing. Now, first of all, before we have a go, I'm going to mention the... Um, the Patreon, where we still have the Nightmare Sudoku Hunt and the, the more aimed at kids, the Super Mario Brothers Hunt, do give those a go um, based, on, based on your ability and preference and how long you want to spend. Um, there's still a day and a half left to enter the, Mario, uh, the, sorry, the Nightmare Hunt. There's no point entering the Mario Hunt. There's no prize or anything for that. No shout outs. Um, anyway, those are on Patreon. We love it when people join us on Patreon. And of course, there's also things like merchandise and all our apps are a huge suite of apps, brilliant puzzles on those. Most, well, I was gonna say mostly hand design. I was gonna say mostly designed by genius constructors, but some of them are by us. They're all hand designed. Um, and those apps are excellent. So do check them out. Um, and generally engage with us Give us some comments. The comments in the last few days have been fantastic. Actually, I should say thank you very much to everybody who was incredibly polite about my Wordle failure um, two days ago, which was posted yesterday, where um, I managed to not get Wordle done in hard mode in six guesses for the first time after 211 correct guesses in a row, or correct solutions in a row. Um, and it hurt, but... It was very much assuaged by people's kind thoughts. Thank you very much. Um, anyway, though we've done the rules, that's exciting. I'm just gonna restart my clock and say, let's get cracking. Now, 34 is definitely a useful number. It is more useful in a five cell cage where the numbers have to be different than 33 and considerably more useful than 32 or 31 because there's only one way to make it up It's 98764 now the simple way to figure that one out if you don't know it already is to think What are the five maximum digits? Well, they're 98765 they add up if you try them to 35 um, But we need to take one off those well you can't take one off any of the higher digits in there without having it repeat one of the lower digits, and that's not allowed in the same row, or indeed in the same cage. That rule didn't have to be specified here. So it has to be 98764, and we can fill that in on this cage as well. Now, the 33 cage, that only has one more degree of freedom, but that's quite important, because it means there's not just one fill. It could be 98763, where we're taking the one off the four, or it could be 98754. Um, however, 987 must be in it. And that feels like it ought to give me some X wings and things. Okay, here, okay, here's another way of looking at these cages. In any cage that begins with 31 or more, nine must appear. So there is a nine in this group of cells. There is a nine in this group of cells. There is a nine in this group. There is a nine in this group, etc., etc. Now, that's interesting from this point of view. I'm just gonna sort of highlight in purple. 
Ah, I've had a, I've had a bigger idea, which I will talk to you about in a moment. Oh, this is very interesting. Right. Okay, anyway, those groups of five cells all have nines in. Now that means these don't, these two by two boxes. Now you might recognize these two by two boxes from some of our earlier videos. They are known as the Fistomophel boxes because they contain the same digits as the Fistomophel ring, which is that ring around the grid. And this works in a very intriguing way. Um, what's the best way to see it? Well, there are, there are a couple of ways to see the Fistomophel ring and why these boxes have to contain not just digits adding up to the same total, but the exact same digits. And one of the ways, okay, let's, let's get rid of all the colouring and we'll look at this again. One of the ways is by considering boxes 1, 3, 7 and 9 which must each, by rule, contain a set of the digits from 1 to 9. So that that I've highlighted there is clip four sets of the digits from 1 to 9. Now, this row, sorry, this column, this column, each of those is a set of the digits from 1 to 9. Each of row 3 and 7 is a set of the digits from 1 to 9 as well. So, you might think I've highlighted four sets of the digits 1 to 9 here, but I haven't quite. I only have done, if you allow for these, counting twice. So I'll make them yellow-green to um, show that. Now, if I eliminate cells that have been counted once in purple and once in yellow, from these four, I've got four purple sets of one to nine and four yellow sets of one to nine. So clearly exactly the same digits in each. Picture Scrabble bags if you want to. And anyway, then I eliminate these cells, which are one purple and one yellow entirely. I take out exactly the same digits from those sets. Then I take out one purple and one yellow from here. And then what will be left with there is just one yellow. And you can now see that I'm left with exactly the same digits in purple as in yellow. And that's how the magic of the Fistomophel ring works. Now, that must be important. It must be important because we can, well, we can know at the top what the digits are. They are one, two, three, oh no, we can't entirely. One, two, three, five in that row. Here, they're either one, two, three, six, or one, two, four, five. They're definitely one, two, three, five in this column because of the 34 there. Hmm, okay, I don't quite know how we do this. We know what they all add up to. because there'll be the numbers that aren't in 45, which is the total of every row, column, and box. That is a secret, but you may want to share it with anybody who doesn't know what the numbers one to nine add up to, because they must appear in every row, column, and box. I don't know, somehow the Fistomophel ring is important here, and I'm knowing this partly from the title of The Devil's Cage. These are the Fistomophel boxes, and Fistomophel is a brilliant constructor of puzzles who has named himself after a devil in German literature, I believe, whose name is in turn based on Mephistopheles. I don't quite know what to do here. Yeah, but set theory is definitely going to be important in this puzzle. And, and Fistenfeld's ring is an example of set theory. Set is a very self-referential acronym standing for set equivalence theory um, and we are what we did with that Fistomophel explanation was we saw the equivalence between those four corner boxes and those four rows and columns that we highlighted now how am I meant to look at the rest of this puzzle I don't quite understand. Am I meant to be doing Sudoku somehow? Or... 
Am I just using the fact that these all have to be quite low digits? There's certainly no 9 on the Fistamafel ring, because none of the purple areas can contain a 9. That's where I was kind of starting to, to think about things. But I don't know how that really helps me. Um, one of these must be a 9. No, hang on, that's not necessarily true. Oh yes, it is true. There's no nine on the Fistum of Hell ring. So, now it's not true to say one of those must be a nine, but one of those four must be a nine. If it's in the horizontal domino, then one of those is a nine, one of those is a nine, and one of those is a nine. Alternatively, there's a nine in there, a nine in there, a nine in there, and a nine in there. And that will account for four of the nines. The other four, well, the other four, the other four nines in cages will be one in there, one in there, oops, well you know what I was trying to highlight, one in there and one in there. Now I don't know what to do here. Sixty-two. Maybe I should go back to my very first thoughts, which were going to be especially up here along the lines of If 9, 8 and 7 have to appear there, and 9, 8 and 7 have to appear here, what does that do to 9, 8 and 7 in row 3? It doesn't really force anything. I suppose at least two of that 9, 8, 7 group has to be in this section. Now, I'm not quite seeing this. This is interesting. It's an interesting puzzle. I feel there is something that is that should be becoming very clear to me about the whole structure. Does it involve these circles? I doubt it, because these can be quite small here. Um... If this was 9, 8, 7, 5, 4... And we'd have one, two, three, six in the purple cells in row two. What would we do with them? Or do we think about what all of these add up to together? So if every row adds up to 45, they add up to 11, these add up to 12. So that group adds up to 23. This group, using a similar deduction on the first two columns, adds up to 22. What is it? For 24, 66 away from 90. This pair of boxes adds up to 27, and this pair of boxes adds up to 28. But how do I use that? Well, okay, 28 for those boxes, but 24 for those. So this box adds up to four less than this box. I don't know. I don't know what to do with that information. It doesn't feel like enough to... Uh, get the puzzle going. Oh, we've got the knight's move restriction. I had forgotten it. Of course I had. I always do. How can it possibly be relevant? Ah, right. It's Potato Head's theorem. And maybe Potato Head is the person we're meant to be referencing. Right. And maybe it's the... Pot Potato Head 21's puzzle in which the theorem that we christened the Potato Head Theorem came to light. Can I put a 9 there? 
Yeah, we've worked out that this yellow ring has right. Here is Potato Head's theorem, and it is fantastic. Then it's based on the Fistemafel ring, and it's vital here, and it's obvious, and it's taken me 12 minutes to even think of it being relevant. And that's partly because I forgot this was a knight's move puzzle, and when I knew that, I didn't know about the Fistemafel ring. However, the really interesting thing about a Potato Head puzzle, uh, the, the theorem, is that what the theorem states is that there is a maximum of one digit that cannot appear in the Fistemafel ring. So of the digits one to nine, only one of them can be missing from the Fistemafel ring in a knight's move puzzle, in an anti-knight puzzle. And if there is one number missing from the Fistemafel ring, that number must appear in the center. Now, how are we gonna justify that? I can't even remember the original justification. It's so long since I've used this, but it is true. Now, why is it true? Because if a number isn't in this ring, then it's also not in the boxes by the rules we've established about the Fistemafel ring. Then it will appear in these dominoes that we were highlighting earlier. Now, what happens on the night? So it's not in... Why is there only one number and why does it end? No, the, the whole point is to prove that if there isn't a number on the ring, it ends up in the center. Yes, okay, I'm beginning to get this finally now. Here we go. This is a very powerful, right, let's color in red, a nice bright color, uh, but not as contrasting. Let's go with bright green. These, so these numbers that don't appear on the ring, nine in this puzzle, must appear either in that pattern in those green cells or in this pattern in the bright blue cells. Now in either case, they cannot appear in these cells because this pair sees this pair in a knight's move puzzle. That one sees that by knight's move and that by ordinary Sudoku. This one sees that by ordinary Sudoku and that one by knight's move. So you couldn't put that nine in any of these cells. So in column five, where could you put a nine? Well, it would have to go in the center box. It can't be in the ring, and it can't be in those cells. So nine would have to be in one of these. In the middle row, where can you put a nine? Not in those cells, we've worked that out. Not in those cells. So it would have to be somewhere in the center row. So we've got an overlap. It's both got to be in that row and in that column, and therefore it's got to be in the middle. And that would apply to any digit not on the ring. Um, however, in this puzzle, we know that nine is not on the ring. Therefore, nine must be in the center. We now know that there is no other digit not on the ring because nine is occupying that position that a digit that's not on the ring would have to end up in because of what we just did in the highlighting. Therefore, every other digit appears both on the Fistemafel ring, eight, seven, and six. I'm looking at you. They all appear at least once on the Fistemafel ring to break up that other possible pattern. And therefore, they all appear at least once in these boxes. And I think that's going to help us to complete them. Where can eight be in a box? Right. I suspect if I think about the digits that can occupy a 32 cage, they always have to include nine and eight. Let me just think about that. If you had nine, seven, six, five, four, which would be the next highest digits if you weren't allowed an eight, they would add up to 31. So a 32 cage must include an eight. So all of those cages include an eight. And that is gonna exclude eight from three of our purple boxes. And indeed, the three boxes it's gonna exclude eight from are those three boxes. And it's gonna keep eight out of those two cells. So the only eight in purple in this puzzle is in one of those two cells. And it, will con it can go on the ring now somewhere, and we will achieve that in due course. 
Now, in this column, we've got 31 plus 8 is 39. The other three outies, the other three purple cells, must add up to 6. They must be 1, 2, 3. Um, so, that narrows things down a bit. Now I want to move on to 7, although I don't think this is as clear-cut, unfortunately. Um... Because we've got to find room for a seven somewhere in purple, maybe more than one, but certainly one. Uh, and I'm thinking about this. Third, I think a 32 cage doesn't have to include a seven. It could be nine, eight, six, five, four. And the trouble is, ah, this 31 cage, whichever one is opposite the eight, Whichever one, if that was 8 and those were 31, that's 39. Then the other three cells in that row would be 1, 2, 3. The other one, the other one will meet, oh no, I was going to say it'll meet a 5 in this column. That's not necessarily true. The 5 could be up here. But where are we going to put a 7? We're not going to put it up here because neither a 34 nor a 33 can sustain a seven outside it. So these boxes are ruled out for sevens. And that may be true for sixes. It's not true for sixes. You could have a six here or in those positions. Okay, but let's do sevens first. Okay, so I'm, what I want to next rule out is, is a seven in one of these two cells. And if there was a seven in one of these two cells, 32 plus the 7 is 39. The other three digits in purple in this column would be 1, 2, 3. If there's a 7 in one of those two cells, then these are from 1, 2, 3. Then all four of these digits have to be from 1, 2, 3. And that's not possible in the same box. So 7 is not in those cells. The only place left for a 7, because it can't be in these two top boxes, because 33 and 34 won't tolerate it, is in these two cells. So the 7 is going to be in one of those. And the, the other digits in this column are going to be 1, 2, and 3. So, we've got 1, 2, 3, 5 in this column, 1, 2, 3, 7 there, 1, 2, 3, 8 here. Now we still need to include a 6 and a 4 in purple. We've only used 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, and 8, and 9 is the only digit we're not allowed to include. So this column has to have a 4 and a 6 in. 32 plus 4 and 6 is 42 plus 2 and 1. So this is, now we've got a 1, 2, 3 triple, so this is going to have to be 4 or 6. This pair is going to have to have 1 of 4 or 6 and 1 of 2 or 1. Now, I did work out, didn't I, what these... No, I worked out what all of these added up to together. Well, that is going to tell me what this digit is. So, they added up to 67. Sorry, I've got a piece of ice in my mouth now. Um, they added up to 67 together. So, these add up to 23. This has now become a 1, 2, 3, 5 set, which adds up to 11. This has to be, this has to add up to 12 with 1, 2, 3 there. That is a 6. So the 4 is down at the bottom here somewhere. Um, so one of these 37, 31s takes 8 and 1, 2, 3. The other one takes 7 and 4 and 1 and 2 as it's outies. So the 3 is in one of those cells and not in one of these, and there's only one 3 in this box. The trouble is I don't know how this gets made up. If that's a 7, that's 1 or 2. If that's an 8, that's definitely 1. Ah, oh, and one of these is going to have to be a 7 or an 8, 
because they're in different rows. So one of the, that's either eight or nine, or that is nine. Hmm. Of course, the other thing is we know all the digits that go on the Fistmafel ring. We know what their numbers are, but I don't know quite where to place them. I mean, I suppose that in a box with one, two, three, and five is four, six, seven, or eight. This is in a box with, oh, there is a five in those cells, so there isn't one here. This is a one, two, three, seven set. So that is four, five, six, or eight. This is a one, two, four, eight set. That is three, five, six, or seven. That's obviously a one, two, three, six set, and this is four, five, seven, or eight. And these are, well, they're not all the hard digits to place. What are the hard digits to place on the ring? Eight, seven, and six are the hardest. No, there's only one five as well, and one four. There's only one of each of those digits, but there will be three threes. Hmm, I don't quite know how to fulfill the rest of that. I could fill in, of course, the makeup of these cages. Now I know what the outies in these columns are and rows. Might as well. Oh, I can't do it for these 30 ones because they're, they're the same. Okay. Um, oh, I see. It's a one, two, three triple here. That's a sort of X wing there. I suppose I should have been able to see that without doing this hideous amount of pencil marking. This is also a one, two, three triple because there's nowhere else in this box for one, two, and three. Um, now, in this row, it's not necessarily true. Although one and two do appear in every box. Yes, okay, these rows, this group of three cells and that group of three cells, they're both going to have to have one and two in because we need four of them on the yellow ring. Oh, I've totally forgotten the knight's move restriction all over again. Right, what can't be six? That can't. This can't, they're in the same box. That can't because of the knight's move. No, it doesn't, it doesn't help me a lot yet. Does it? Yeah, I don't think I've forgotten it at a bad time, but I have forgotten it. There's never really a good time to forget things. One, two, eight, four. So that can't be a four. One, two, three, seven, that can't be a seven. One, two, three, five, they can't be fives. Now, if I've missed anything else, uh, I suppose nines can't be in these places. I feel like I'm going to have to think about these two fellas now. For us not to have nine in a circle here, that would have to be eight. Um, which would put eight there. I think it would make seven here and one here. So to not have nine in a circle, we'd have one, seven, eight there. Not quite sure what that does to our puzzle. Okay, we've made some progress here. It's all been theory. I wasn't planning to do a theory puzzle today. Um, this has rather blindsided me. Oh, there is a five in that cage, so that's not a five. So we can place the five in the corner. No song for you. Um, yeah, I don't, I probably haven't missed much else there. 
Seven and four are going to be opposite each other. I don't see how we decide on these 31 cages. If that's an eight, that's nine. That's a one. And if that's a nine, we have a nine in there and a nine in there and a nine in, oops, in there. here. Ah, oh, here's something I'm missing. Oh, this is one of these lovely things that I forget. Right, this cell can't be in any of those because it sees them all, basically. Those two by night's move and those three by see it being in the same box. So that can't be five or seven. This one sees all of those and can't be similarly five or seven. Oh, this is a bit interesting. This sees all of four, five, seven, eight, nine. So that is a six. This sees all of four, six, seven, eight, nine. So that is a five. Okay, that might get things done a bit more than I've been achieving so far. This sees all of four, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's a five. This sees all of four, six, five, eight, nine. So that's a seven. Now, we'll keep tidying up the pencil marks, because otherwise they were pointless to have made. Um, now, I can't take this down here, but... What can I do? Five sees that cell. Uh, there is a seven here and a seven here, so one of these is definitely a seven now. Oh look, five can't be in any of those cells thanks to that five, or those cells thanks to that five in the central box. Suddenly I can do five in the central box quite unexpectedly. Let's use the things we know. Five sees all of those cells. Now I think five was the only digit in really great shape. Oh, that can't be a five. Right, where's five going to be on the Fistamafel ring? We do need one, because there's that one in purple. I don't think any of these yellow cells can take a five, so I think it has to be here. Wow, okay, good. Now five is definitely in one of those two. Um, or looked at in terms of rows, it's definitely in one of those two. So it's two, two of these are fives. There's a little diagonal of fives there. And there's definitely a five in one of these two cells. Now it's a pity that there isn't another digit that this stuff works on, but it looks like it was only five. Six has to be in one of those three. What about these three cells then, which... Oh, that can't be a three, because we've got a one, two, three, triple. One, two, three, seven, five, four, six, eight, nine. Oh, six has been... Yes. Didn't do the full pencil marking job up there, but I've done it now. One of those is a six. Why do I think it's certain to be there? I don't know. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm quite interested by the fact that four and eight have to be in all of these cages. So surely, I suppose it doesn't prove that they have to appear in these cells, but it feels like it almost does. Um, six and nine are now in, in both of these cages in this row. That's not actually as helpful as I wanted it to be. <laughs> so 
So in fact, one of these cages, I'm just going to note down here what the constituents of these two cages are. I don't know in which order, but one of them has 7412 outside in the purple cells in its row as the outies. The other one has 8123 in the purple cells as, is, as its outies. So one of them has a 4 or a 7 in these cells, and the other has a 3 or an 8. So these actual cells are from 3, 8 and 4, 7. But I don't, and they add up to 11, which is odd, but I don't know how to use it. Maybe it is these circles. Maybe I'm meant to do something with that now. What am I meant to do? Ah, I suppose these, these places now don't have 3, 4, 7, and 8, because either... No, that's not necessarily true. I was thinking either those numbers are in this pair or in their box. But I don't think that is necessarily true and I'm not going to try and take that any further as an idea. I still, I still keep rejecting the notion every so often that I meant to start colouring ones, twos and threes now. Although it does have some appeal as an idea. I don't think that can be what I meant to do next. I have a feeling I might end up doing it. Um, but what is next? I mean, it's very obvious I don't know, and I'm trying to have to think this through. There is a five in one of those two cells, as well as one of those two. They're forming a little X in both of those boxes. Can that be a five? Could be if this was a 2 3 pair, couldn't it? Then you'd have 7 and 1. The 7 would be opposite an 8. The trouble is, I think you can have 5 in a circle. Maybe I'm meant to find a reason why you can't. Although, even if I did, that would only put 5 in these cells. See this, one of these is eight or nine. What's the other one? If that is a high digit, eight or nine, it's using the seven here, then eight goes down here, then the most the other side can be is a two and a four. No, hang on, it would use the seven and the four would be here. Oh, that's interesting. Right, if this is the high digit with a seven there, that's putting 8 here and 4 here. This is a 1-2 pair. So if that's a high digit, this is a 3. If this is a high digit, that puts 8 here, 1 here. This is either 3 or 9. That's all it can be. That's so strange. If it's the high digit, it's 9. Now, what happens over the other side? We've got 8 there, 4... Oh, this isn't possible. Didn't I work out the seven has to go with the four in the row? I think I did, yes. One of them has outies of eight, one, two, three. Well, that can't have the nine here because you'd have eight, one, and the four in this box would have to be there. Right, that is the low digit. This is the high one, eight or nine. Okay, that has taken a while to see through. Very good, Tinker Troy. Um, this is the low digit. This is three. This is a one, two pair. And this is four. And this is eight. And we've got some progress now. Um, that eight. This is the seven. Uh, this is now one or two. In fact, that three says that's not a three. So three is here. Now let's look up here, 7, 3, that's a 2, 1 pair, that's a 3, that's not a 3, that's a 3. Okay, 
I think we've still got the ones and twos to resolve, but we've done a lot of good work on threes there. Now, this is not three, four, or seven. This is eight. That means this is nine. I think this, oh, bother. I thought these had to add up to 11. Okay, let's, let's forget the deduction I thought I'd made there, because I think this is more right, what I've done now. And, and it seemed to go wrong if what I thought I'd concluded there. In fact, let's look at this cell. It sees 6, 5, 9, 3, 4, 7. In fact, what's in this cage? It's not 7, 1, 2, 4. It's 3, 5, 6, 8, and 9. That is an 8. That's a 9. And that's a 6. This is a 2 to make the maths work. 2 and 1, we can take that up to the top and across to the right. And that's all the purple digits done. If I'm right, and now I'm nervous. This seems to have to be a 6 now. And this is a 4, 7, 9 triple, but 9 can't be there. Actually, let's not forget the knight's move at this juncture. 7 there. This is now again 1, 2, 3, which is quite possible because we did need a third 3. So that's all the 1, 2, 3s from purple transferred into yellow. No, it's not because there's also a 1, 2 here. Let's say they were in those cells. Then the other purple digits are 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 once each. And they go here here, 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 and one of these three. And I don't know any more about it than I did before. Right, this is a seven, nine pair now. Um, six, three, five. Why hasn't this got any easier? I thought it was all gonna come to, come to Papa now, but no. And maybe my conclusion that those two would add up to 11 was wrong. I think everything else about them being from 3, 4, 7, 8, well, it clearly was right, assuming I'm on the right track now. So that's fine. Um, come on, I'm just missing stuff now. It's okay, I'll, I'll spot it in the end. I think it's more Sudoku from now on. Eight sees that cell. I mean, if it's knight's move spotting, this could take a while. <laughs> oh, I was tempted to say, where does six go in the ring? But it's still got those two possibilities. Oh, maybe it is time to look at ones and twos. Right, that can't be a two by knight's move, and nor can that. The, that can't be one, and nor can that. This two reaches those two cells. Oh, that's a seven, not reaching anything here. That three, though, reaches that cell. Three has to be in one of those. Four reaches that cell. Oh, this is the slow progress way of doing this puzzle. All I've got though, so bear with me. Now, maybe in the central box, six reaches all of those cells and the six at the top there. So, well, that's useless. There is a six in one of those three. Seven, nine pair can't appear in those. They're not trying to anymore. Eight. Eight can't be in those cells. So eight must be in one of these. But eight is also in one of these yellow cells. That's not necessarily true, because eight could, I suppose, be in one of those. Oh, come on, Mark, try and find a way through. 
having having got so much of this done, it's quite irritating now not to know what to do next. Three, two, five, one, six. Is it nines? I suppose those all can't be nine. I hadn't noticed that before. So one of those two is a nine. But the trouble is this could be a nine. What happens if these are all nines? Oh, well, we've got this nine. That's kind of pushing nines around the grid. So one of those is a nine. Those aren't. One of those is a nine. And then we end up with one of these being a nine. So that hasn't really snapped anything. Um, just tidied up a few more pencil marks. Six has to be in one of these three cells. Five has to be in one of those two. That's not pushing anything around the grid because of the five in the corner. It doesn't have to appear there. Five's definitely in one of those two as well. Now we've got the two fives here. That was thanks to the circles. Couldn't the circles do a bit more work or couldn't we be given a few other circles to help complete the puzzle? Um, Uh, while I'm going, I should apologise for yesterday's puzzle where the rule set that we published it with wasn't entirely clear. Now, we only got the puzzle a few days ago and the Boston Marathon was imminent. And one of the testers also found that there was an ambiguity to resolve in the puzzle. So that tester sent me versions of the puzzle, including the final correct version. I'm afraid it was my version control that went wrong with which puzzle went on site. So I apologise about that. I did know at least the rules for myself when I was talking through them and when I was solving. Um, but there we go. It's entirely me to blame. In fact, the tester worked very hard to make that puzzle possible and I botched it. My apologies. Um, anyway. Eight can't be there. Oh, come on. What am I not seeing now? Maybe it's one of these things where in this col right, in this column, six has to be in one of those two positions. So that cannot be a six, because it would see one of them by knight's move. That's quite interesting. Six is definitely in one of those two. If it was there, ah, it can't be there, because that would push six in the central box to here and leave nowhere for six in row five. In fact, now I've done what I've just done here. Six in row five has to be in one of those two positions, but it can't be there because in column eight, it's in one of those two positions, so it must be here. Aha! So that gives me a 7-9 pair here. So this is now a 4-5 pair up here. That 6, what's that going to do for me? Not much else, annoyingly. And now I've got all of the position, all of the digits in those equivalent positions. Oh gosh. Okay, I'm looking at these two cells and saying, how could they be one, two, or three? And they couldn't. Right. If this was one, two, or three, that digit couldn't appear in these two. And therefore, in these triples, it would have to appear, that digit, in those two, but they would clash with each other. So that can't be one, two, or three. The same works the other way around with this one. If it was there, it couldn't be in those, and it would have to be in both of those in the triples below. So these are not one, two, or three. They are four and eight, therefore. 
This is one, two, or three. It can't be three because of this. This is one, two, or three, and this is three. And they're not. Um, that's not three now. Well, that's an interesting way of looking at it. Now, if I knew this was a one, two, three set, which I actually now know it's not, I could pull the same trick here. In fact, maybe it works the other way round. Ah, yes, no, where does four go in this column? I can do that now. It's not in those cells because of the four, eight pair, so it's down here. That's done my whole triple at the bottom. I really am not feeling that I've been incredibly slow and stupid about this. I think it's just quite hard. Nine is definitely in one of those cells, so there's a little X of nines or a diagonal of nines there. Four, eight, nine, five, six. Now, <coughs> what I was going to think about is if one of these is one, two, or three, and one of them has to be, although seven is also here, one of them is one, two, or three. Those can't have a seven in. Let's just pencil mark while I can. In fact, that's a four, eight, nine, triple. So that is from one, two, three as well in this column. One of these is from one, two, three. Now, I was thinking if it's there, it can't be in those cells. So it would have to be here. And then it would have to be here. Because Knight's move stops it being there. If it's here, it can't be in those cells. It would have to be here. Knight's move stops it being here, so it would have to be here. So it's always a three in these cells along with a seven. Wow. That has taken some getting at, as you can see. Now, three, seven, nine, four, eight, five. These are from one, two, and six. One of those two is a six. That's a one, two, three, six quad. Um... Why won't it just unwind for me? So cruel. Three and seven. So one of these is a three. If that's a three, it doesn't really get at the X-wing of threes here, does it? It really doesn't. That's a two, that's a two, that's a two. Ah, whatever this is can't be in either of those cells. And all, one and two have to be there, so it's there. Those are the same digit. And in row seven, they're here. Row six, they're here. So this one is not a three. So now that is a three in this one, two, three triple, and that's a seven. And that's a three. And that's seven. Come on, seven. Do something. It sees that cell and that cell. Uh, the three, I knew it wasn't going to see all that much. I'm still left with just four remaining, no, two remaining threes in the grid to sort out on that X wing. Now it may be time, finally, to colour the ones and twos. I mean, I think I've used the Fistmafel ring as far and further than it can go, and the Potato Head Theorem. Let's start colouring ones and twos. So not, I'm not going to colour the ones I've already placed. I'm going to colour the ones I'm finding. So there's a purple one there and a green one there. Green there. That sees this by Knight's move, so that's purple. Um, and I want to find a cell somewhere that sees both purple and green now. There it is. That can't be one or two, because it sees green on the knight's move and purple in the row. So that's a three. That finishes off my threes. Now I can do two and one there. Now I find that my little purple is a two. Let's get rid of the colouring. My little green is a one. And we uncolour that as well. That can't be a one. This is now a two. That's a one. This has to be six. That's two. Oh, I do hope this is going to keep working because it feels like the end of a monstrous struggle. Um, and we're not finished yet, but we're getting closer. We've got lots. Have we got all the one, two, threes placed in the grid? 
Yeah, we have. Wow, that was sudden. Um, so I've still got the fours, eights, and nines to sort out. Oh, look, there's this old Fistamafel triple of four, six, eight. Oh, no, but I also had to place a seven on the ring. So that's here. I mean, I can still use the ring after all, just after I've finished colouring it. I do need a seven on the ring. And that's become here. Wow. Well, that's very helpful. Indeed. Indeed. So much more helpful than I was expecting. I think it's going to do everything. Um, that four is seeing that cell on the knight's move. So this has become a six. That's a four. Uh, this can't be four anymore by the knight's move. So there we go. This is going to unwind the whole puzzle. Six and nine here. That finishes its box is an eight. This finishes its column. It's a nine. Four is visible by knight's move from there. So that's an eight. That's a four. None of none of these can be fours now. So in this column, that's a four. That's a nine. That's a nine. This is eight. Whew, I feel exhausted. Really, really tired after that. Four there and a seven to finish off. 53 minutes. Whoa. What an epic struggle. What a brilliant puzzle. Sorry about the deduction where I thought they added up to 11. I never used it. It was wrong. I did know they came from 3, 4, 7 and 8. I think I mistakenly assumed they added up to 11. But uh, that was the only full step. There were a lot, a whole passel of slow steps. But no actual other fourth steps, I don't believe. And that's a brilliant puzzle. Thank you, Tinker Troy. I'm sure you are referring to the potato head puzzle. I don't know what it was called, but it was it was instructive and brilliant. Uh, definitely Simon solved it. And uh, thank you for letting me have a go at one. I will hope to see you guys on the channel again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.